In the name of the living God and his crucified, risen, and ascended Christ, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. They had abandoned him. They had denied him. They were utterly confused about the most important parts of his teaching. In jealousy and in competition, they fought amongst themselves about who was greater. They showed an incredible lack of faith all the time. And yet, and yet, after he had risen from the dead, the Lord Jesus chose to spend an extra 40 days with those yahoos known as the disciples. You wouldn't have done that if you had been Jesus. Neither would I. That's not the way we work it. When people forsake us, we forsake them back. When people curse us and deny our friendship, we block them, cut them off. When people misunderstand us or misinterpret us or what we're all about, we respond with exasperation or resentment. You can say that we are the peace out people. See you later. Ain't got time for this. I am so done. But not our Lord Jesus. He has given every reason to never speak to them again, those disciples. Yet he continues with them for 40 days after the resurrection. He stays with them. He forgives them. He breathes peace upon them. Instead of peace out, our Lord is peace in with his disciples and with us. But now, as you see in the image that we have before you, it's time for him to physically leave their presence. This is the ascension that we're talking about. After 40 days of preparation with them, it's time for him to physically leave their presence. How difficult this must have been for them. The image that I have before you this evening helps us maybe picture a little bit some of the human emotions that they certainly would have been experiencing as they felt what it was like to be away from Jesus, yet then he's there with them, and now he said he's going to leave them, what they would be feeling. And I want you to look at this, this image that we have and maybe pick out which face would be yours. We've got the disciples, we've got the Blessed Virgin Mary, we've got other people gathered around there on the Mount of the Ascension. What would you be feeling? Which face might be yours? After all that they had been through together. As Pastor mentions, the church calls this the Ascension because it's the day when Jesus Christ ascended bodily unto glory to be enthroned as king and ruler over all things. And there, my friends, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And there, even now, this evening, whatever is happening in the world around us, whatever is happening in our hearts, he is there amid the sights and sounds of eternity. A wondrous glory that we can't even imagine. In today's gospel account and in the reading from Acts, he's about to leave them. And as he leaves them, his departure is like some of our departures that we have. Mixed emotions, I imagine. Sadness and maybe joy. Apprehension, maybe exhilaration. Questions, uncertainty. But as he prepares to leave them, he leaves them with two promises. And these two promises I want you to take with you this evening as well. There are things that he has promised to the disciples and to us and to the church for all time. And the first promise is that though he is leaving, something better is coming. Someone better is coming, if you can imagine that. 
Jesus promises that he's going to send them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon them, and the Spirit is going to dwell within them as they continue the Lord's work on earth. Jesus told them this, you might recall, when he is in the upper room on the night in which he was betrayed. St. John records this for us. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I'm going away. For if I did not go away, the Helper would not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So he's going to physically depart from them, yet he's going to dwell with them in power by the Holy Spirit. And because through the Spirit, Christ is going to dwell within them, they are going to become little Christs. Martin Luther's phrase. They are going to become little Christs in a mysterious and powerful way, in a way that could not even happen if he had stayed with them physically. They will embody the work and the mission power of Christ. You see, although we cannot see the physical standing, Jesus standing with us, yet we know that he is more powerful and real for us through the Spirit than even if he was standing in this room right here. We are his body, his flesh and blood. So the first promise is where we are Christ still is by the Spirit. Everybody read that with me together. Where we are, Christ still is. He has departed to be with God on the right hand of the Father, and yet he has given us his Holy Spirit, and he embodies us through the Holy Spirit. Where we are, Christ still is with us by his spirit. This means that you and I, we who believe and are baptized into his name, we carry on the work of God as the real presence of Christ in this world. We are baptized into his name and therefore we carry his name wherever we go. We hear his word and therefore we spread his word. We receive his body tonight in this place, in this altar, and therefore we become his body here to the very ends of the earth. Where we are, Christ still is. By his spirit, he dwells within us. So that's the first promise. He leaves them physically, but he gives them his spirit, and they become his body, his workmanship, his little Christs doing his work in this place. And that's comforting for us to know that as we carry out the work of Jesus, That he is actually with us in a more powerful way than when he was with those disciples at the mountain of the ascension. Hard to believe. Christ is within you. The spirit you have been given. You are his representatives, his little Christs in this world. Through the word and sacraments, he dwells within us, even to the very end of the age. Say it together with me. Where we are, Christ still is. That's the first promise. The second promise Jesus gives them as he departs from them amid all of those emotions, everything that they were feeling on that day. The the second is a promise that is equally true for us. And that is where he goes, he will bring us to be with him one day. Where Christ goes, we will go. Everybody say that. Where Christ goes, we will go. Amen? Amen? Where we are, he is. Where he goes, we will be. Now, where does Christ go? What have we been singing about and reading about this evening? Jesus is going to go to glory on that ascension, to the angels and the archangels surrounding the throne, to the place of light and love and life eternally. To the place beyond all tears and trials and suffering. To the place of perpetual peace. Just as Jesus himself passed through suffering and death 
and rose on the third day and then ascended up into the, he to the heavens to the Father, so also he promises this to us, to all who believe in him and are baptized in his name. Where he goes, we will go. This promise of glory with him is given to us not because we're sinless. You're not. Not because you've tried hard enough. You haven't. Not because you've got it more figured out than the bumbling disciples. No, not a chance. He does this for us solely because of his grace alone. We are the church of the Reformation. We are the church of grace alone. It is because of his grace alone that we have been given this gift of being with him in glory one day. Jesus came to earth to save sinners. By his blood, he makes us right with God the Father and reconciles us to one another. His cross wrought for us forgiveness for all of our sins, and in his resurrection, we have been brought new life now and even unto eternity. Because of what Christ Jesus has done for us, we will be with him in glory forever. Where Christ goes, we will go too. He promised it. He said, just as you have seen me go up into heaven, I will return again. And he will speak our names and take us with him to that place of angels and archangels, the feast of victory, which will have no end. Friends in Christ, we abandon he abides with us. We deny him, but he claims us as his own. We get it wrong every day, but he gets it right by the cross. We peace out, he pieces in. So don't be discouraged. Don't fret about what's going on in the world or what's going on on TV, what's going on in our homes. In our hearts, don't fret about this. He has given you these two promises that he is still with you by his spirit and you are his representatives in this place. And he has promised that he will return to take us to be with him forever. And that day will be glorious. We will be enthroned with him forever. The song will never end. Peace will be eternal. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.